The dollar has been in absolute freefall over the past few weeks, bringing out the usual suspects to claim that this is an ominous sign of something on the horizon. But is that really the case? Should we be seeing the drop in the dollar as some sort of signal to imminent collapse? Or is this just the normal progression of the business cycle and something that is very easily explained and maybe even something that should be viewed as bullish for the long run? That's what we're going to discuss tonight. Before we do, though, make sure you get subscribed to that notification bell on Give this, give this video a thumbs up on the way out if you find it particularly helpful. And if you're watching this on X, follow me over there as well and give it one of those little hearts. All right. Yeah, I did that. All right. Let's let's uh, let's go ahead and pull up the dollar index. I, I, I've got it up on screen and I'm going to lay some theory out first. And, and you'll, uh, you can yeah you can see what's on screen, but I'm going to lay some theory out first here. And certainly the dollar index is about 5% down from June and it has been having a precipitous, uh, precipitous drop here. But I, I think here's where I want to start. When it comes to when it comes to equities, when it comes to stocks, there really are two main drivers that are usually the, the dominant force in terms of where equities are going to head. The, the, the primary driver at any given time, and certainly when it's accelerating or massively decelerating, it is absolutely the primary driver. That's going to be the fiscal flows. When the government spends, that's adding financial assets to the private sector, that's immediately increasing profits, that is just boosting the thing that boosts asset prices. And there's a direct correlation between accelerating uh, fiscal and asset prices pushing higher. So it is a uh, it is a dominant feature in asset prices, and there is a direct line from the government spending to higher profits to higher investment to liquidity to purchase stocks, right? So there's this very clear path. Now, that's not to say that there isn't another million variables that are out there that might impact equity prices, but the the single variable that outweighs them all, especially when it's accelerating, is the fiscal. And then when that finally gives way, there's this other dominating variable that becomes the credit cycle. With the dollar index, it's a little trickier, and there's never one variable that wins out in terms of the impact on the dollar index, which makes things like foreign exchange much trickier to forecast. But what we can do is we can use our understanding of the macroeconomic system. We can use that applied MMT approach and understand what it is that the dollar index is telling us at any given time, given where we're at in the broader system in that moment in time. What I mean by this is, yeah, things like fiscal are important to where the dollar is headed, but also in that equation are things like trade deficits. It's things like political political risk can set up how the dollar index and other foreign exchange and, and currencies might, might add. Capital flows can impact the price. A central bank policy, not only things like QE, but also where rates are at. All of these various elements kind of get put together in this uh, ingredient list and they have equal input in terms of where the dollar is going. But I would say if there is one dominant feature at any given time that really establishes where the intermediate to longer term trend is of the dollar index, it's going to be the credit cycle itself. And that's why I have the chart up on the screen that is up there. On the top level, we have the S&P 500. On the bottom level, we have the dollar index. And as you can see, I've color coded various uh, little segments of the dollar index with the corresponding time frame that played out in the S&P 500 above. And what I want you to notice is consistently when the dollar index starts to take off, push much higher, that puts us in a realm where we end up seeing higher volatility in markets. It's when the dollar is pushing higher that we see the biggest drawdowns. It's when the dollar is pushing higher that we see the biggest risk in equity space. And this is going back, going back all the way to the great financial crisis with what I have on, on the screen right now. When the dollar is pushing lower consistently, that's in alignment with markets that are relatively bullish. And the reason for this, I would say this kind of, uh, we're call this like a soft correlation here. And again, I, I want to be very, very clear. What I'm about to spell out is not the sort of mechanical way the stocks operate from fiscal flows, right? There's a very mechanical process that takes place from fiscal flows to equities pushing higher. This is a little bit different. And again, it is not the dominating factor at all times, the way, say, fiscal and credit is with equities. There's a lot more happening here. And each of the various components contribute to kind of the overall volatility of the overall movement that we see in the dollar. But 
one thing that definitely happens is when the credit cycle starts to take off, that's doing something kind of special to the dollar market as a whole. When you create a loan, when you go you know, borrow money and you're doing that at a bank so that money is being endogenously created, it's actually creating new dollars. So that's increasing the amount of dollars that are out there. And the other thing that it does is that becomes effectively a short on the dollar, right? You're borrowing that money to then go sell it back into the system for whatever it is that you want to purchase with that money. And so that puts downward pressure because you're you're now effectively short the dollar and you're actually creating the dollars and putting them into the system. And that happens when you create new loan, when there's actually credit creation that's taking place place. So again, the, the, the concept we want to kind of get in our minds is that when endogenous money creation happens, that means you're getting a loan from a bank, you're creating new money that is now entering the system that will become profits for companies and start off the entire growth process. And you now, the borrower, are effectively short the dollar. So you now want the dollar to go lower because that means it'll be cheaper in, in nominal real terms when you go to now pay that loan back because there's just the value of the dollar is now lower. And so you're, you're effectively short the dollar. And if the dollar were to push higher, that's going to put more strain on you your specific position. So we, we have that dynamic playing out. And that is why, as, as I've been seeing the dollar push lower, and, and I'm, I haven't necessarily been forecasting the dollar to push lower per se, I've, but I've, I've more thought, yeah, it makes sense given where we're at, given where we're at in the credit cycle, and the credit cycle just taking off, that if we were to see the dollar push lower, it would just add to the confirmation that, in fact, yeah, we are seeing this credit cycle push lower. And, and uh, you know, again, my, my, my forecast hasn't been, God, the dollar has to push lower here. But there is definitely the space for the dollar to push lower here, given where we're at in the overall in the overall business cycle. And the fact that the, now the dollar is pushing lower, to me, that gives a lot of confirmation that that is exactly what's happening. So when we look at something like bank credit that has been taking off and accelerating very heavily for the majority of 2024, that is consistent with what you would expect a scenario to, or the, an environment where the dollar index is pushing lower. And that's exactly what we've been seeing. So I'm not seeing the dollar pushing lower to be some ominous sign of, you know, dollar collapsing or whatever scenario the uh, kind of the perma bears love to uh, love to dream up. I see this as just a natural outworking of bank credit expanding and the beginning of this bank credit cycle that we are currently in. And I would expect the dollar now to push lower for the coming months as this credit cycle really starts to play out. And what will happen eventually, because it's a, it's a cyclical system, it's a dynamic system, eventually we will get to the point where the credit cycle runs out and then the entire thing's going to start to start to unravel, right? So if what's pushing the dollar right now above all else, if it's the dominant feature that's pushing the dollar lower, is the credit cycle expanding. So new loans being created, that money going out there in the system, driving up profits and allowing that whole credit cycle to continue, pushing the dollar lower. What will eventually happen is that cycle will exhaust and eventually you will start to have to repay back those loans. The loans won't be created as fast as they need to be paid back. And then you get yourself into a credit, a bit of a, a credit crunch at an aggregate level. And that is exactly what we see play out in the time frames that I've highlighted here in red, where you get, uh, yeah, I mean, effectively a credit crunch and you get uh, business slowdown and that sort of thing and a lot of fear baked into the market. And you see the sudden shot higher in dollars. Why? Because when you go from expansion to contraction, you end up finding yourself in a scenario where everyone is now rushing to get dollars and there's a dollar shortage as everyone needs to deliver. And that creates a lot of instability in the system that shoots the dollar higher. The dollar becomes much more valuable. And the outcome of that in the equity space is you see a lot of volatility and that's when the big drawdowns happen because that is where the, uh, the risk really emerges. And so that's why at this point, I'm not terribly concerned with what we're seeing with the dollar index pushing lower. It's in completely consistent with the credit cycle that's emerging, with growth that's happening, and I would expect it to continue for some months to come. And that's actually gonna be a good sign in the sense of it's gonna confirm where it is that we think we're at within the overall business cycle, which is this expanding credit cycle. And so, yeah, overall, you know, 
in general, don't pay attention to the perma bears and, and the usual suspects in terms of claiming anything and everything is always some sort of indication of, of imminent collapse. And when you use kind of a more holistic system dynamic, you know, applied MMT approach and start to piece each one of these things in terms of where they're at in, in any individual in any individual step in the in the cycle, you begin to understand what it is that something like the dollar collapsing is actually trying to tell you about where we're at in the in in the in the broader market space. So all in all, I'm not concerned about the dollar. If anything, it, it continues to just kind of confirm my overall long-term bullish stance. I think this is a this sort of healthy push lower that you would expect in the dollar. Eventually, it'll reverse. It'll push back higher. That's just the normal cyclicality of how things work. But for now, I'm going to mark this as a bullish signal for the credit cycle and then ultimately for the uh, the current uh, the current kind of market condition. Again in the long run, just to say that the business cycle is expanding and this seems to confirm it. That's all I have for tonight. If you are new here, uh, make sure you check out, and you're an active trader, active investor, make sure you uh, check out AppliedMMT.com. That's where you can get the sort of research in depth, all the tools that we have available uh, as well, all the sort of models and whatnot over there, AppliedMMT.com. But that's it. Until next time, good trading, everyone. We'll talk to you then. Bye-bye.